Okay, well, welcome alums. We're happy to have you today um, to what I consider to be one of the highlights of um, reunion weekend and a perfect point to all of us being gathered together. Um, I wanna begin first with a prayer um, as we do in so many things and then we'll get started. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Jesus, thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for the guidance and wisdom of the sisters and the Salesian spirituality that they have given us all. Please help us to be the people that you intend for us to be. Um, in your name, amen. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Um, as I said, um, this is one of the highlights of the, of the reunion weekend. And yesterday at the alumni luncheon, we heard from numerous alums about the influence and the foundational influence of the sisters throughout their lives. And it's something that I think is so important for us to understand. Um, Salesian spirituality has always been the heart of Georgetown visitation. For over 223 years, the sisters have imbued the school with their special expression of gospel living called Salesian spirituality, named for St. Francis de Sales. It is a universal and practical spirituality that encourages us to trust in God's providence as we walk through our days and provides us inspired common sense and guidance on how to best do this. Salesian spirituality is the summation of the teachings of our Catholic co-founders, St. Francis de Sales and St. Jane de Chantal, who founded the Visitation Order over 400 years ago in France. Through Though Salesian spirituality is centuries old, it is still powerfully relevant today because it's based on knowledge of human nature. In addition to our relationship with God, it offers guidance on how to navigate life's relationships and challenges with simple ideas and small actions, like discovering the extraordinary in the ordinary, finding God in the midst of busyness, and living the little virtues. The sisters have lived Salesian spirituality, and previously we alumni absorbed this through their presence in the classroom and around the school. Recently, though, we've started teaching Salesian spirituality in a very intentional way. Today, our lay community, alumni especially, are invited and needed to carry the charism, as we say, with the sisters, so the visitation students and the world can continue to know the beauty of their way of living Jesus. This morning, we've invited a few alumni across the decades to share their favorite Salesian lessons in which anyone can find meaning for, um, and use every day. We'll also be opening up the conversation for your insights and reflections, so we hope that you'll share with us at the end of this too. Um, after today's discussion, we'll send an email with some links to readings and reflections for those of you who'd like to take a, a deeper dive. So without further ado, I'm going to start and invite our first alum, Kitty Walk, class of 1982, and mother of Fiona Ellsworth, 16, and Gracie Ellsworth, class of 18, to share her thoughts on Salesian spirituality. Kitty? Thank you, Susie. It is really a joy to be here this morning. Um, to be honest, it's a joy whenever I get to share a stage with Sister Berkman's and also with with um, Olivia Kane, who's one of my favorite people, and Elizabeth and Sidoni and Susie. Uh, and then also, I'm still feeling a high because of that wonderful um, the wonderful reunion that we've been having. So many of my classmates came. It was great to see everybody, and um, it really has underscored for me what a what a gift visitation is in my life, and actually in the life of my whole family. So um, as Susie noted, uh, our topic is Salation Spirituality, and this is, this is an important one. It's hard for me to choose how to, uh, what to focus on. Uh, and I'm super glad I'm going first because then I think you will have forgotten the whatever missteps I said by the time you get to the end. Um, the, but as Susie said, when, when I was in school, I attended visitation from 1979 to 1982. I, I transferred in as a sophomore. It was not, at that time, there was not an explicit um, effort to teach Salesian virtues and, and spirituality. It was, I think, as Susie said, it was kind of picked up and absorbed by the constant presence of the sisters in our lives. But when my daughters went to visitation, 
between 2012 and 2018, Salation Spirituality and the Little Virtues were intentionally embedded into the curriculum and life of the school. As a visitation parent, I learned about them from my daughters. And I was also able to begin attending Sister Berkman's monthly group discussions on Salation Spirituality, for which I'm deeply grateful. I've continued learning from Sister and I continue participating in those monthly Salation Spirituality groups, even though both my daughters have graduated. The collected wisdom of St. Francis de Sales and St. Jane de Chantal presents a framework for living, which is enormously helpful for life in the 21st century. This is like a blueprint and it's a real gift to, to, um, to life in 2022. Francis and Jane, in my opinion, what they're writing about and talking about is addressing the fundamental question that all of us ask, particularly when we're young, but really, if we remain alive inside, this is a question that we ask throughout our life. And that question is, how then shall we live? The then in that question means with our current and ever expanding understanding of the created world and of ourselves, of our limitations and of our strengths. This question, how then shall we live, has been embraced in Jesuit spirituality, but it's exactly, I think, what uh, Francis and Jane are talking about and explicitly writing about in, in their um, body of work. Salation spirituality offers a strong and clear answer to this question of how should we live. They, they set up, Salation spirituality set up, sets up a set of principles and values which are um, applicable, as Susie noted, they're applicable now as much as they were ever were because they address essential human attributes which have not changed. The common characteristic, I think, in Salation Spirituality, uh, or the principles, the virtues that, that Salation Spirituality highlights is that they are pragmatic. This is unmistakable if you read uh, any of the actual writings. And they also orient a person toward openness, toward connection. You could call these our life hacks, that they, they may have been passed down more naturally in previous times when people lived in less isolated ways, Perhaps now we need to be more deliberate about learning and adopting a way of life that will lead us to be more, more fully human and more, as uh, one of the famous quotes from St. Francis, more fully who we are and who we are intended to be. So for, for this morning, we were asked to select a particular theme and virtue to talk about, and I chose caring for the needs of our neighbor because I think this theme is fundamental to all the others. And also because I think it can be misunderstood or, or, um, or really not fully understood. This concept on the surface is simply a call to serve others. And it is that, but I think it has a deeper significance. Of course, uh, the starting point is, is important. We, we are indeed called to serve others. As Martin Luther King and many others have said, injustice and suffering anywhere is injustice and suffering everywhere. We are indeed our brother's keepers and we, we have an obligation to care for each other. But more than that, the call to care for others reminds us, in my opinion, that it's through caring for others that we ourselves grow. We move forward in learning about who we are and in becoming more deeply connected to our community and in strengthening our relationship to our creator God to the extent that we are engaged with and attuned to the needs of others. This orientation towards the needs of our neighbors also acts as a necessary counterweight to our strong human tendency towards fearfulness, which can lead us to focus exclusively on our own needs, which narrows our worldview and blinds us. Human beings are relational. We only see ourselves clearly if we see ourselves in relation, and especially in a relation of self-giving to others. So um, the theme of caring for the needs of our others reminds us that we need to allow ourselves, this is another part of it that's not understood, I don't think as, as well, we need to allow ourselves to be cared for by others. This is not easy, especially for those of us who are very privileged because it requires vulnerability. I'm fortunate in having been the recipient of good guidance uh, from visitation in many ways, because my mother was also a graduate, the class of 1955. 
She was highly pragmatic, just as Francis and Jane were. And she was not sentimental at all, which was sometimes a little bit jarring. Um, she got this attribute from her own mother, but I won't go into all of that. She had a very reflexive sense of the obligation that each one of us has to care for each other. And this is exemplified in a story that's really about her. Um, when I was at visitation, I was either a sophomore or a junior. I was required because of my low marks in math class to attend a 7 a.m. remedial math class taught by Sister DeSales. It was actually a wonderful experience. All of us were blockheads who couldn't do algebra, who were meeting at seven o'clock in the morning, but Sister DeSales was funny and warm and she made us feel valuable and she made us feel like we actually could master mathematics. Each class started with a prayer for our own enlightenment and also for the needs of our community. And I remember one morning she, she added to her morning prayer um, that one of the women who was employed at visitation, I think she was employed in the cafeteria, had some kind of a health crisis and her children, um, and so the woman herself needed to go to the hospital and Sister DeSales wondered out loud in the morning prayer what would happen who, to the children, who would take care of the children. So I, um, as soon as class was finished, I went to the payphone at the bottom of the stairs, the stairs leading down to the locker room, and I called my mother. At this point, it was around 10 minutes before eight o'clock and my mother was trying to get my younger siblings out the door to school and she was not happy to get a phone call from me. But I explained what was going on and um, she said she would think about it. And later that day, Sister DeSales found me on campus and she said that my mother had called and offered to take care of the children of this employee while she was in the hospital. It wasn't necessary because by that time, of course, the woman's family had made other arrangements. But Sister DeSales was moved by that and she, she had thanked my mother on the phone and she thanked me. And then for the next 20 years or so, every time I came back to visitation, Sister DeSales would remind me of that incident. It clearly has resonated, it had resonated with her. And I think the reason she remembered it and she kept talking about it to me was that it reflected this Salesian orientation toward caring for the needs of others in a pragmatic and, um, and immediate way. It was, um, it's an ironic aspect of our modern life that although we are more connected than ever, we are also more isolated and anxious than ever. And I think our American value of self-reliance has been overstated and has contributed to this destructive, to a destructive ethos of going it alone and um, looking out for number one. But we are our best selves when we are attuned to the needs of others. I'll tell a final story about my younger daughter when she was a student at Visitation. Of course, things had changed by that time and, and um, little virtues and Salesian spirituality was being, was being explicitly taught. So as a senior, I don't know whether she volunteered or she was assigned to give one of the monthly reflections on the little virtue of that month. This is a time when the students all get together and, and um, she was gonna give this reflection to the whole student body she was assigned the, the virtue of gentleness. As it happened, the week prior to her talk, she learned that she had not been accepted at the college she had chosen as her early decision school. She was devastated. It actually still makes me, it was devastating for all of us when I think back on it. But her ultimate reaction showed me that she had indeed absorbed the Salation message the visitation teaches. The same day that she learned of her rejection, she sat down and completed several more applications and hit send on the Common App program. So she had applied to like five additional schools by the end of that day. She was not letting the disappointment slow her down at all. In the next few days, she wrote and delivered a talk to the whole student body on the subject of gentleness. And what she talked about was being gentle to yourself and not beating yourself up when you don't succeed. It was a beautiful message um, and, it, and it, I think she did, it, she did it for her own reasons, but it had a wonderful purpose for other, there were other girls in the, in the audience who were hearing that and who were taking it to heart and several of them spoke to her afterwards. By sharing her story, she encouraged other students to treat themselves more gently. And also I think unintentionally, she allowed herself to receive more loving support from, from her community because otherwise she had not been out there advertising about this terrible thing that had happened. 
but by being vulnerable about it, she allowed herself to receive support and love from others. So the Salesian virtues are really life skills, even though they were articulated several years, uh, several centuries ago, but they are a wonderful gift to us here and now. Um, and I think we need them more than ever. I know, I, I know that I do. Thank you, Kitty, that was beautiful. And um, just a perfect way to explain how Salesian spirituality enters our daily lives and, and how we live it. Um, next, we'd like to hear from Elizabeth Pearson. Um, Elizabeth is class of O2 and um, she is on our alum board and we'd like to hear from her now. Thank you. So yes, my name is Elizabeth Pearson, although 20 years ago, I was Elizabeth Schneck in the class of 2002. Um, today, as I consider and reflect on my time at visitation 20 years ago, which blows my mind, um, I'm really amazed that four quick years shaped my sense of self and my faith so profoundly and so permanently. The spirit of visitation, the charism supported me and stayed with me even after I walked to the Green Gate. It guided me as I navigated college, professional life, marriage, death of friends, death of a parent, and motherhood. Um, it brings my faith easily into my life, and it really helps me see and live Jesus where I am, which is the heart of the charism. The Salesian theme of respecting the dignity of persons and the little virtue of hospitality have been important in my life, especially since graduation, through my experience working with people with disabilities. Um, as a young college student, I began volunteering at a therapeutic horseback riding program in Clifton, Virginia. I had heard about the program through an old friend and felt a strong desire to go and see what it was about. On Easter Sunday, 2007, I drove to a small barn and I watched a young man with a wheelchair ride a horse, walk, trot, canter. And honestly, it just moved me to tears. Um, as a child, I was lucky enough to grow up riding horses between the ages of seven and 14, every weekend I was at the barn riding. And through riding, I gained confidence, a sense of accomplishment and independence. I felt a powerful connection to the horses and to all the animals. And I learned about myself through my relationships with them. I wanted to be a part of making such experiences possible for those with disabilities. So I signed up on the spot that day. I believe that this moment was a moment of grace in my life. Um, it was a moment when God called me to see how the blessings and experiences of my own life were given to me so that I might invest them in the lives of others. Over the years, I held many roles at the Northern Virginia Therapeutic Riding Program, a volunteer, an instructor, a board member. I groomed horses, I mucked stalls, I taught lesson plans, I drove to horse shows, I raised money, and so on. But I found God's image and love in the people that I met there. The people, especially the riders, were the heart of the work. In Rachel, who was nonverbal and wheelchair bound, but who loved to ride the sassiest horse in the barn. In Cole, who was on the autism spectrum and enjoyed grooming a chestnut named Chet, quietly whispering to the horse who really truly seemed to listen. In Sam, who had Down syndrome and learned to ride independently. And in Rob, one of the recovering military personnel who was suffering from the physical and mental challenges of combat. At NVTRP, we taught people with disabilities how to ride horses, um, but we also strove to give them dignity, independence, and friendship. St. Jane writes, may our hearts be enlarged with compassionate, loving support of our neighbor. Let us always be ready to serve, assist, console, support, and comfort others as much as possible in a spirit of joy and cordiality. Community is the heart of the Salesian charism. I rediscovered it and lived it, especially the Salesian virtues of respecting the dignity of persons and hospitality that I first encountered at visitation through the Northern Virginia Therapeutic Riding Program and the special community of respect and inclusion fostered there. So I prepared those remarks, but I do wanna add on just a little bit. Um, something that Kitty said really resonated with me, this idea of community and how it's in the air at visitation. And yes, we see the quotes on the walls and now it's wonderful to hear that it's taught in the classrooms specifically, but it is, it is something that 
I think we absorb just by being on campus. It's something that we absorb through the teachers, through the sisters, through our peers and our friends. Um, and it does change us. It, it comes with us in our life. I think all of the virtues are meaningful and powerful because they're easy for us because they're in us. And so we bring it with us with everyone that we meet. So in this example that I gave at the barn, it was truly hard just to choose one or two. I think Susie let us pick two, um, but I do see them throughout the, my life. And it's something that I think is really the true gift of the visitation experience. We all had wonderful educations and we all made friends for life, but the way that the Salesian charism and the spirit of the school grows with us and how we take it with us and other aspects of our life, that was the real gift for me um, in my four years of visitation. So thank you. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. That was beautiful. I didn't know that about you and I'm so happy to know it and um, appreciate it. All right, and now we'd like to hear from, hold on a second, from Sidani Becton, class of 07. Sidani has been the, um, one of the tri-chairs of our Alumni Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion um, Committee, and she's been on the alum board for several years. Sidani? Good morning, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Susie, um, and to the rest of the Office of Alumni Relations for the opportunity to speak with you all this evening, this morning. Um, my name is Sadani Beckman from class of 2007. Uh, this morning, I will address the importance and the gift of Salesian spirituality in my life, particularly through the lens of the Salesian theme of accepting the will of God and the little virtue of sincerity. Prior to attending visitation, I went to middle school at St. Francis de Sales Catholic School in Northeast DC. Though I am not Catholic, it was here that the importance of the little virtues were instilled in me. Every day, one of the sisters who happened to be the vice principal at the time would start our day over the intercom by announcing that we should be who we are and be that well. This familiarity with Salesian spirituality carried over while at visitation, where we were reminded of the little virtues daily, whether in our morning reflection during homeroom, through a flyer posted outside Mrs. Grimaldi's office, or through, as you've heard from other alums this morning, through our interactions with one another as students. To me, Salesian spirituality is far more than simply emulating certain acts of St. Francis de Sales here and there. It is a way of life. It is truly living out virtues like kindness, sincerity, and patience, not just in our actions with, each, with others, but in our thoughts and how we interact with God on the regular basis. So often, we can get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life that we forget to just take a second to be more intentional about how we think, how we act and how we speak. The gift of Salesian spirituality is that it allows us the opportunity to hit the pause button and to reflect on who we truly are. Perhaps this is why the concept of Salesian spirituality resonates with me because it forces me to be more intentional in life and to find meaning in even the tiniest of things. A couple of years ago, for some reason, I ended up researching that the quote that we all know from St. Francis de Sales, that be who you are and be that well. And I discovered that that wasn't the quote in its entirety. De Sales charged each of us with the following, let us be who we are and be that well, in order to bring honor to the master craftsmen whose handiwork we are. As we all know, the saints were messengers for God. He spoke through their words and through <clears throat> excuse me, through their actions. So what we see in this quote from DeSales is God telling us to be exactly who he created us to be and that it brings him honor when he sees us doing so. Part of being who God created us to be is accepting his will for our lives. Growing up in a Christian household, this idea was instilled in me from a young age, but it's only since I've gotten older that I'm beginning to truly understand what this means. Anyone who knows me knows that I tend to have my hand in a number of things at the same time, whether that's event management, my law practice, singing, writing, you name it. I love using the talents that God has given me. Last year, I made one of the toughest decisions yet in life. While still being a practicing attorney, I would attend seminary and begin the journey of becoming an ordained minister. And sure, it's exciting and I absolutely love the knowledge that I'm gaining every day but I also understand the tremendous task that God has given me. 
And to be honest, I ran from this calling for a long while because of how heavy this task is. Having reflected on the Salesian theme of not just accepting the will of God, but sincerely doing so, I understood that at some point I had to yield over my personal wants and needs for those God has called me to. DeSales quote tells us that we are God's handiwork and not our own. I had to remind myself that my purpose here on earth is so much bigger than Sadani alone. As I prepared to share my reflection with you this morning, I faced one of the most devastating experiences, the sudden loss of a loved one. The past two weeks have really forced me to dig deep and understand that God has given me multiple gifts for a time such as this. Not only could I minister to the immediate family grieving and assist through the process using my legal skills, but I planned the memorial service in New Jersey and the vigil to be held tonight in Maryland. None of this would be possible if I had not yielded my will to God's will for my life. Looking back over my life, I can definitely see times where God's hand was present there, gently and at sometimes not so gently guiding me. Whether that was making the switch from law school to an event sports management program at Syracuse, to working as a retail store manager, to being more active in my church's young adult ministry, becoming a Sunday school teacher, or even learning how to process and work through grief. Each of these experiences has made me, has made me stronger and shaped me into the person God has called me to be. So summarizing all of these experiences in light of my time at visitation, I would certainly say that God calls us all to a life of service. It's simply a matter of figuring out how best to utilize the gifts and talents God has instilled in you to serve his people. At times, this may seem like an insurmountable task, but when we sincerely and humbly ask God for his guidance and truly accept his will for our lives, this task becomes easier every time. Thank you. Thank you, Sadani. That was beautiful as well. I, I'm feeling just really um, overwhelmed at the beautiful reflections that I've heard. Um, and we're gonna hear from one more alum, um, our, our fearless leader, Sister Mary Berkmans. But first I'd like to um, ask you all to congratulate her because next, this Thursday, Sister will be celebrating her 70th Jubilee of her profession of her vows very exciting and sort of a perfect um, week for this, uh, this conversation with sister. So sister, it's up to you now. Thank you, Susie. I was trying to keep that celebration under wraps and just make it a spiritual one this year, but it got out. So um, when I think of Salvation spirituality, I have through the years compressed it into three major movements, if you will, in my life. The first is to try to live in the presence of God. And I think when we're all running around doing all kinds of, carrying all kinds of responsibilities, we can forget this. But it might be good to just find little moments in your life when you could have a tuning in, as it were, to God's will for you. Um, might be when you're making your bed in the morning. It could be as you, you have a key in your car, turning the key on the ignition when you're stopped at a red light. Just find little moments like that in your life that can remind you that you're living in the presence of God. So that's the first one that I always feel is important. The second one is really uh, accepting the will of God as it unfolds in the circumstances of your life. Sometimes we get very frazzled and uh, we forget that there is a higher reason, a higher person directing our lives. Now I can tell you a story. Well, I'll finish by saying the third aspect of living in the um, living solution spirituality is practicing the little virtues we've just heard so beautifully recounted by our friends here. But I can give you a story that has just never left me 
in all my years. And I, I don't even remember when it was, but it was many, many years ago. I was in uh, Mrs. Murphy's English classroom, hanging out the window, well, girls were hanging out the window, telling it was in January, it was sort of half snowy, half not. And they were telling everybody who was driving in that no school, you can go home. And I went out into the parking lot and I guess I acted like a mad woman, trying to control the traffic, trying to keep people in school, not going out. And I did anything but practice Salesian spirituality at that moment. And the next day, we happened to have a mass celebrating the feast of St. Francis de Sales. And the priest recounted all the Salesian virtues, the special emphasis upon gentleness. And I sat there and the whole scene of the day before came before me. And I just felt totally mortified that I had failed so thoroughly at that moment. And I've always, uh, but I've, I've always realized the power of God's grace is active in our lives. And at that moment, uh, after Mass, I was sort of propelled up onto the stage by the Holy Spirit, I guess. And I apologized for the way I had acted the day before, which was anything but, uh, it was doing nothing to present the beauty of our Salesian virtues. So patience, kindness, gentleness, understanding, all those virtues could come into line and help us whenever we are frustrated. And I guess we all have those moments in our lives. Um, that was fun in mine, but I, gosh, I don't even know how many years ago that was, but it is still a very vivid remembrance in my life and one of shame in the sense that I would have failed so totally after preaching the virtues of gentleness and kindness, thoughtful concern for others. And I think those are the, that, the virtues that I really uh, admire the most and strive for. Gentleness of mind and heart, thoughtful concern for others, be kind and understanding. Why are they acting that way? What is promoting that kind of uh, behavior? So I think that um, these are the practical ways that we can live our solution spirituality. I would say my favorite virtue really is gentleness. And I think it's because I need it, but I really think it's a beautiful virtue. And I always refer back to Jesus's injunction, learn from me because I am gentle and humble of heart. And I think that is the essence of our Christian life. Certainly the essence of my life is a religious in the visitation order and an invitation for me to live closer to the Lord each day of my life. So as you just heard, I've been at it for 70 years. <laughs> That's a pretty long time. Uh, and I've gone through different versions of it throughout my life. But I think what I am extremely grateful for is the way our lay faculty and our all of our members of our visitation community have embraced the beauty of this uh, Salesian way of living. And I believe also, uh, given the situation in our world today, where we're all being tried <clears throat> in so many ways, and. I think if each one of us in our individual lives can strive to live kindness, thoughtful concern for others, gentleness, that these virtues can spread throughout your contacts and hopefully beyond to our greater world. We've got a lot to pray for, and my prayer daily is that we can influence some of the negative aspects of our lives in our life as a country, as a world, with um, gentleness of spirit. 
Thank you so much, sister. That was beautiful. It's always wonderful to hear from you. Um, I am going to invite Olivia um, to speak next, but I also wanted to say to our guests, if you have any comments or questions that you'd like to put in the chat, feel free to do so now and we will um, talk about them at the end. Okay, Olivia. Thank you. Good morning. Um, what, what, a, what a gift it is to be, to be here this morning. Um, I'm Olivia Kane. Um, I'm the director of our St. Jane Deshaunel Salesian Center. I'm a proud member of the class of 85 uh, who is not actively reunioning this weekend. Um, so it's been so fun for me to get to spend time with twos and sevens. Um, and I'm privileged for the last six years to steward the Salesian Center's mission, which celebrates precisely what we've been doing this morning, which is learning about and sharing the sisters inspired gentle way of living Jesus. Um, so that it will remain vibrant and relevant for future generations of uh, visitation alumni uh, when they come back for their 20th and 40th and 60th reunions. Um, uh, I think we've been incredibly blessed as young women uh, who were taught at visitation to be invited into this lifelong relationship with the sisters and to always be assured of their prayerful presence in our lives. Um, I think that's quite remarkable. And we know that wherever we may be physically or emotionally, um, and this morning sharing only has reinforced it, that they are with us. Um, the spirit of visitation is with us and the prayers of the sisters are always with us. Um, I think it's a, a beautiful witness to the virtue of hospitality that a couple of you have shared. Um, the idea that we've been invited to carry the charism with the sisters and to bring it out to others beyond the green gate. Um, and I just love that um, um, people say yes to this invitation. It's a, it's a very um, joyful invitation. It's a very sacred invitation. Um, and as you all have shared, it's a practical invitation kind of to daily say yes. Um, in all the different walks of life, we have the different vocations that Sadani talked about. Um, talk about how people continue to say yes to the will of God um, and just say that um, we trust you know, and to walk with humility and gentleness and simplicity. So I'm just, I've, I've learned so much. This has been a, a beautiful formation moment for me um, uh, to have four alumni speakers, um, three, lay, three lay women and a, and a sister um, give insight to how they respond to St. Francis's invitation. Um, what I loved that the quote from him is, learn to see God in the details of your life for he is everywhere. And I feel like that's what I heard this morning about in, in a, a, in a barn with horses and, um, you know, in, in a 7 a.m. blockhead math class and, and in ministry to those grieving and uh, in, in yelling after students who are hanging out the, the classroom windows trying to tell people school's canceled. Um, I think God was in all those moments and obviously you all found ways uh, to respond to that, to that creative way that God shows up for us and that we need to respond with yes. Um, I'm going to put a plug in for a few wonderful uh, Salesian opportunities that some of you already attend and know about, but um, if you're hungry for more, um, you know, uh, as Kitty mentioned, um, monthly we have a Salesian friends group that meets on Tuesday mornings, and Susie will send a follow-up email with all these written down, but just to give a little oral shout out, uh, there's something called Salesian friends group that's been meeting for 10 years for an hour um, to talk about a Salesian text. And we just share how it speaks to us and how, how we try and bring those tenants into our everyday lives. And it's alums and parents and past parents and just a wonderful group. Um, Crescent Conversations was launched about two years ago uh, with Elizabeth Schneck Pearson's leadership. And it's for what I'm going to say is young alums because I'm really not one of them, but it's a lot of people from the last maybe uh, two, three decades out um, to gather on a Sunday evening. Um, just virtually eight o'clock at night to kind of close out their weekend um, and their month with Dr. Olga Rasmussen, a former religion teacher in a very meditative, prayerful sharing way. And it has a very different vibe than Salesian Friends Group. Um, if you'd like to get your uh, Salesian spirituality uh, in your email inbox, we have Loving Life, Living Jesus on Wednesdays with a different reflection from how someone in our community lives Jesus. Um, and the most important thing I guess I can say is that please always remember and share with others that that gift of prayer that the sisters give us, their ministry of prayer and their ministry of presence 
um, uh, there is an email inbox called intentions at busy.org. And anywhere, anytime, you can send an email to the sisters for them to bring forward for their prayer. And um, so please, um, that is, I think, an incredible lifelong gift we have from the sisters. Um, so I will um, look forward to connecting with Susie to make sure that these opportunities are shared with you. And please always um, feel free to reach out to me if you would like or need more about Salesian spirituality or um, for me to share it with your class or group of friends or anything. Um, I try and be creative and um, flexible. So um, I wanna make sure that I turn it back to Susie if anybody has shared any questions or thoughts before we close with prayer. So far, no more questions. Um, I don't see any in the chat. If anybody has any, I think we can close. Um, I am very excited that, um, as you all have talked so much about hospitality, um, because I do think that is such a hallmark of the visitation, of the mystery of the visitation, particularly um, that Christ bearing and Christ receiving. And there's a prayer that we um, often pray, um, um, particularly in the month of May when we celebrate the Feast of the Visitation, but it is um, such a beautiful um, visitation prayer. So I will close with it called Carrying Christ. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Carrying Christ by Ruth Mary Fox. Into the hillside country, Mary went carrying Christ. And all along the road, the Christ she carried generously bestowed his grace on those she met. I pray that I may carry Christ, for it may be that some would never know of him except through me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this Sunday morning. It makes me so happy. I feel that we are, um, again, uh, such a strong visitation community, and we are held together through our Salesian spirituality, and we're so blessed that the sisters and St. Jane and St. Francis shared that with us. So have a good rest of your Sunday, and um, I hope to see you all soon. Thank you all so much. This is Thank Terry you. Moore, and this is just such a wonderful conclusion to my 50th reunion awesome. celebration class of 72. And, and uh, this is, like I said, just a great conclusion. Thank you all for an incredible um, event this morning and the entire weekend. And sorry, I just wasn't in a position to turn on camera, but did want to just express my deep, sincere appreciation and gratitude to be a part of the visitation community. Thank you, Terry. You know, I think that uh, we've had a beautiful example of a woman carrying our Salesian spirituality in Susie Kuhn. Susie Kuhn's Egan. She's still Susie Kuhn's to me. I saw Susie after the luncheon yesterday, piling up a cart with huge cartons. God knows what was in them. She knows. I don't. And to see her going out of the double doors on Founders Hall, kicking one door open with her leg, another with her arm, and trying to push this huge cart through. And she did it for two double doors all by herself. And I just thought to myself, there is a woman who's dedicated to what she is called to be right now. And I think our alumni uh, association is truly blessed with the leadership of Susie Coons. She's a woman with a mission. And my goodness, I saw her pushing through those doors, and, you know, trying to get through a double door with a heart. Imagine it. And she did it with grace and peacefulness and <laughs> Oh, th thank you, sister. I've said it five times this weekend, and I'll say it a hundred more. I have the greatest job in the world because I get to um, I get to meet and know and be inspired by our alumni every single day. So thank you. You're an inspiration. <laughs>
Good afternoon, everybody. Have fun. Have a great day. It's beautiful outside. Enjoy. And thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.